Wizard Kodu is a brand new 15 billion parameters LNM fully specialized in coding that can apparently rival ChatGPT when it comes to code generation. Hello humans, let me scare you overload and Wizard Kodu is a brand new 15 billion parameters LNM model that was specifically built for coding projects. So in this video, let's check out how good it actually is. Now from what I understood, Wizard Kodu uses the Star Kodu model as a base which was already by itself a specialized coding model which was then trained even further using 78,000 code instructions using a special fine-tuned method called Evolve Instruct. Now when it comes to raw performance, the Wizard Coder model actually performed better than a lot of very powerful famous LNMs like Google Bard or even the Anthropics Cloud model. And in this particular benchmark, it actually came third with very similar results to ChatGPT, which is actually very impressive when you consider that this is a very small 15 billion parameters model. Now that being said, that's great and all, but how exactly does it perform in practice? Well, to test this, I'm going to be asking that model a bunch of coding questions and then evaluate the quality of the generation. And for this, of course, I will be using the Uwa Buga Tech Generation Web UI. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made an installation video, so if you haven't done it before, you definitely need to watch this video first. And to download the model, of course, as always, we'll be using the 4-bit quantized version made by a user called the bloke. The link for that page will be again in the description down below. So you're gonna come here, click on this little icon right here to copy this entire name, then in the web UI, you're gonna click on model, scroll down, and just below the load custom model of Laura, you're gonna paste that name and then click on download, which will then download the model onto your computer. Now again, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it before. But then you're gonna scroll up, click on this little icon to refresh the list, select the wizard coder model, which will then be automatically loaded inside your web UI. Now when it comes to the parameters, I'm using the Llama Precise preset, but with the temperature at 1 and top P at 0.95. And also do not forget that in the chat settings, you need to choose the Alpaca instruction template, because otherwise you might get bad results. Okay, so now that being said, let's have some fun and let's cast the model a bunch of coding questions to see how good it actually is. Now pretty much every single question that I will be asking will be written in Python because they are very easy to test and I will also be using a website like programmers.com to compile the Python code online, which is really really easy to use. Okay, so that being said, let's begin. So I'm gonna start with a very simple questions and then the more we go the harder the questions will be. And I'm gonna start with a very simple question which is write a script that prompts the user for their name and prints hello comma name. So now if I click on generate, we get these two little simple line of code. So now if I copy this entire code and then put it right here, and then if I click on run, the console command asks me what is my name. So if I say K and I press enter, I get hello K, which is very simple and exactly what I was looking for. Again, it was a very simple question, but wizard coder answered it perfectly well. So very nice. Okay, so for the next question, let's make it a bit harder. And I'm gonna ask something like, write a script that prompts the user for a string and then prints whether the screen is a palindrome or not. And for those of you who don't know what a palindrome is, it's basically a word that can be read from left to right. So now if I click on generate and we get something like this with a bunch of explanation that is kind of unnecessary. But now if I select this entire code and then put it right here, then press run. It of course asks me to enter a string. So if I input something like overlord, which should not be a palindrome, and if I press enter, of course it says that overlord is not a palindrome, which is correct. But now if I try again and I enter something like Anna and I press enter, the console command tells me that Anna is a palindrome, which is of course correct. So yeah, once again, good answer from the model. Okay, so next question, let's do something similar, but this time with numbers. So if I ask to write a script that prompts the user for a number, and then prints whether the number is a prime number or not. So now if I click on generate and we get something like this, again, very simple code. So now if I select it, then paste it right here, then click on run, it asks me to enter a number. So if I enter something like five and press enter, it says that indeed five is a prime number. However, if I enter something like nine, and I press enter, it says that 9 is not a prime number, which is indeed correct. And of course, it works with other numbers too. So yeah, I mean, again, good answer. Very simple and easy code generation. So at least we know that Wizard Coder is really good when it comes to simple code generation. So now let's start asking a little bit more harder questions. So how about something like, write a script that prompts the user for the length and width of a rectangle, creates an instance of a rectangle class, and then prints the area of a rectangle, which again shouldn't be 
that hard because it should be a simple script. But now if I click on generate, and again, we get something like this, which definitely looks a little bit more complex and longer from the code we had previously. But now if I select this entire code and then paste it right here and then click on run, it asks me to enter the dimensions of the rectangle with first the length, let's say, I don't know, like 15, for example, and then the width, let's say, I don't know, like five. And in the end, very simply, we have 75 for the area over the rectangle, which I mean, again, is very easy. It's very simple to calculate because to be able to find the area of a rectangle, all you have to do is just multiply the length and the width. So again, it's not really that hard, but the model did it perfectly well, especially because it did not say how to calculate the area of a rectangle. So not only the model understood the prompt, it understood the task, but it also knew how to calculate the area of a rectangle. And they implemented those two concepts together to create this very simple code. So once again, Wizard Codo is doing really, really well. So for the next question, let's do something a little bit more different. And I'm going to ask to write a script that prompts the user for a number n and then prints the first n numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, which if you don't know the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So it's basically 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc, etc. So now if I click on generate, and we got something like this, which indeed for me looks correct so far. It's a very simple code. But now if I take it and then paste it, then click on run, it asks me to enter the length of the Fibonacci series. So if I input something like, I don't know, 15, and I press enter. And of course, as you can see, it gives me the first 15 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. So basically, as you saw, I didn't have to do anything. I did not have to explain what the Fibonacci sequence is. The model already knew what this was and created the code according to the prompt. So once again, so far, Far, the wizard coder has been absolutely perfect. Each code has been just top notch. So yeah, really, really cool. So next, let me ask a little bit more of a harder question, which is to write me a Python code for a simple calculator. And now if I click on generate and we get something like this, which I mean, looks okay to me. Uh, not sure why there is a, such a big space here, but it's fine. I'm just gonna copy the code, then paste it right here. And now if I click on run, it asked me to select an operation between add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So let's take three for multiply, enter the first number, so how about 15, enter the second number, so how about seven, and as you can see, 15 multiplied by 7 equals 105, which indeed is correct. And now, for example, if we try and divide and we put something like a random number and then divide it by another one, we get something like this, which if you compare it to the actual calculator that you have on your Windows, we indeed get the same exact number. Meaning that once again, the code provided by Wizard Coder is a total success. And just like that, it created a full calculator very, very easily in only a few seconds. I mean, this is really impressive. This is pretty cool. So for the next one, let's actually ask a few questions that you might use on maybe a website that you're building or maybe something that you want to implement somewhere else. So maybe something very simple like write a script that prompts the user for their date of birth in the format day, month, year, and then calculates and prints their age. So again, very simple, but can definitely be useful in one of your projects. So now if I click on generate and we get something like this, which I mean looks fairly simple, but again, it can be very useful. So now if I select this code, and I paste it here, then click on run. It asks me to enter my date of birth in the form of day, month, and year. So if I put out random something like 01 of 01, 1900, and now if I click on enter, it says that I am 123 years old, which is indeed correct. I am indeed 123 years old. And since this is using the date of today, if I input something like 15 of June 2023, it says that I am indeed zero years old. But if I input something like 14 of June 2022, it says that I am indeed one year old. So the math is definitely correct. So I mean, once again, the model is on a roll, and as of right now, it still hasn't done a single mistake, which is really, really impressive. So how about another question that you might actually use in a website or in one of your projects, which is to write a script that prompts the user for a principal amount, the rate of interest and time period, and then print the simple interest. So now if I click on generate and we get something like this, which is um, definitely simpler than I thought it would be, which I mean, in a way kind of makes sense. I don't really know what I was expecting, to be honest. But now if I take the code and I put it right here, then click on run, it asks me to 
enter the principal amount. So let's say maybe $100,000, the rate of interest, let's say maybe 3%, and then the time period in years, let's say maybe five years. And now if I press enter, it says that the simple interest is around $15,000, which indeed, if we try it out on another website, we see that we indeed have the same results. So again, that code is definitely correct. And as you can see, using this model, you can create these little projects that are very similar to what you can see on other websites, and you could potentially monetize it if you know how. So this free wizard coder model is definitely very, very interesting. I mean, it is extremely powerful. There is really a lot of projects that you can create with that model. So maybe let's try another project. So let's say for example that you have a website that captures emails and you want to see if that email is correct or not. Well, for this you might need a few lines of code. So let's actually create those lines of code. So with this model, let me ask something like write a script that prompts the user for an email address and uses regular expression to validate that the input is in the correct format for an email address. So now if I click on generate and we get something like this, which looks very simple. But again, it might be something that you need for a project. So now if I copy this entire code, paste it here, click on run, and it asks me to enter your email address. So maybe if I try something like ai.com, and I press enter, it says that it is an invalid email. So maybe if I retry and I type something like at gmail.com, it says that again, this is an invalid email. But now if I try again, and this time I'm gonna make like a semi-real email, ai at ai.com, it says that this time this is a valid email address. So I mean, just like that, very simply, very easily, in a few seconds, we created a few lines of code to check whether the email address entered in a field is valid or not. Now I'm sure that nobody is most of the things are already done automatically, but this is just an example of what is possible with this model, especially because this is just running on your computer for free. So again, this is really, really impressive. And of course, lastly, I'm gonna ask my very favorite question that I ask all the time, which is write me the HTML code for a web page with a button that when pressed changes the background color to a random color. So now if I click on generate, which uh, again, for some reason has trouble generating the code inside the, uh, the chat box, but now if I I choose like the chat instruct mode and I try again and we get something like this which looks I mean, really simple. So let's hope it works. So now if I select this code and I use this HTML website to run the code, which indeed gives me a change color button. And if I press on it, indeed, it does change the background color to a random color. So, I mean, yeah, this is perfect. I mean, this is just fantastic. So yeah, I mean, what do you want me to say? This is really by far one of the best, if not the best model when it comes to coding. So I think that his reputation of being pretty much on the same level as GPT 3.5 for coding is really not exaggerated. I mean, this is really impressive. However, do not forget that this model is really just specialized for coding. It is not specialized for role play or anything else. Because if you ask a question other than coding, like a simple math question, for example, and I click on generate, I basically get this insane answer that really doesn't really mean much and it's just complete nonsense. And even if I ask a very simple, very basic question, like if a rectangle's length is 10 units and it's with 7 units, what's the area? And I click on generate, I get this absolutely insane answer again, which makes absolutely no sense and is completely hallucinating and is probably one of the worst answers I have ever seen. So yeah, I mean, this wizard coder model is really only made for coding and nothing else. Because for everything else, this model is really, really dumb. However, if you are looking for a project, a model that can run on your computer with around 12 gigabytes of VRAM and that can easily write code for your projects, Wizard Coder is definitely the model that you need to try. I mean, I gotta say, this is by far one of the most impressive coding model I have ever seen. And also, if you don't want to install it on your computer and you just want to try it out, you can come here and try out some of those backend demo and ask a bunch of coding questions for free. So you don't even need to install anything on your computer, you can just try out those free online demos. So yeah, I mean, you absolutely have no excuses to not try this model out. So yeah, there you go. For me, as of right now, Wizard Coder 15B is one of the best NNM models when it comes to coding. And if you have a coding project that you need help on, you should definitely try it out. It is really, really good. And there we have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much for the Patreon and YouTube supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.